This video will serve as an introduction to amino acids and proteins. An amino acid is a compound that contains both an amine group and a carboxylic acid group. And proteins are composed of many, many amino acid units. We'll begin by looking at amino acids. I want you to be able to identify the fundamental components of an amino acid structure. There's an alpha carbon center, a carboxylic acid group bonded to the alpha carbon, an R group bonded to the carbon, and an amine group bonded to this alpha center carbon. A hydrogen is not shown in this Lewis structure. Here are a handful of amino acids with nonpolar side chains noted in red. The side chains are the R in an amino acid. Here are a few basic and acidic side chains. An amino acid can exist as a zwitter ion. Zwitter ions are neutral compounds with both positive and negative charges, which make them neutral. So amino acids have an ionic character. The unionized form of an amino acid is somewhat fictional. An ionized form of the amino acid is more realistic of a representation. Therefore, from this point, we will not consider the unionized form. Let's take a close look at when amino acids are placed in relatively acidic and relatively basic environments. We'll start off with a general amino acid, no, an R group, no specific amino acid. If we place the amino acid in an acidic environment, the oxide of the carboxylate group becomes protonated. The hydrogen ion from the H3O plus attaches to the O minus. The zwitter ion becomes a cation. Also note the water byproduct from this reaction. If we put an amino acid in a basic environment, ample hydroxide, notice that the hydrogen ion attached to the nitrogen of the amine group is removed and combines with the hydroxide to form water. And the oxide of the carboxylate group is still intact. So the amino acid went from a zwitter ion to an anion. The isoelectric point of a zwitter ion is an important parameter. The isoelectric point, or PI, is the pH at which an amino acid is a zwitter ion and has no net charge. Both positive and negative charges exist, canceling out, leaving the zwitter ion with zero net charge. Each amino acid has a particular PI. Here is a general example of a zwitter ion with a PI of 5 net charge zero. If we place this particular amino acid in a basic environment, we would expect an anion to form. Put this amino acid in a relatively acidic environment below pH 5, we would expect a cation to form. But at pH 5, we have a zwitter ion. So the pi of an amino acid is the fulcrum of ionization. At the PI, it's a zwitter ion. pH is below the PI, a cation is formed. pH is above the PI, an anion is formed. We'll take a look at a few examples next. Here is a brief list of amino acids and their associated PIs. I would like for you to determine the charge of an amino acid in solutions with different pH values. What is the charge on alanine at pH 3, 7, and 11? We must first know the pi. You will not be responsible to memorize any pi values. The pi for alanine is 2.77. At pH is below 2.77, for example, 2, alanine is a cation. At pH is above 2.77, example 3, 4, 5, or 6, 
or even seven. Alanine is an anion. Alanine is an anion at all three of these pH values. Next, aspartic acid. The pI for aspartic acid is 6.01. At pH 3, aspartic acid is a cation. At pH 7 and 11, it is an anion. And finally, arginine. The pI for arginine is 10.76. At pH is 3 and 7, arginine is a cation. But at pH 11, arginine is an anion. A very important covalent bond forms between two amino acids. It is called a disulfide bond, and it forms between two cysteine amino acids. Two cysteine groups bond by an oxidation reaction to form a disulfide bond. Recall oxidation is the loss of hydrogen. In this case, each cysteine amino acid loses one hydrogen. Disulfide bonds play an important role in the shape of a protein. There is a formal name given to the bond between amino acids in protein structures. It is called a peptide bond. In more general, it is an amide bond. An amide is another organic functional group. I would like for you to know how to recognize a peptide bond or linkage and know that when two amino acids react to form this bond, the products are a peptide and water. On the left side of this reaction, we see the carbon and the nitrogen that form the amide or peptide bond. And the right side, we see the peptide bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. Applying conservation of mass to this reaction, one of the oxygen needs to be removed from the alanine and two of the hydrogens needs to be removed from the serine, which produces the byproduct water. I want you to be familiar with these three terms, peptides, polypeptides, and proteins. A peptide is the shortest chain length of amino acids. A dipeptide is an example of one. Polypeptides are amino acid chain lengths between a peptide and a protein. Proteins are the longest length of amino acids. I would like for you to appreciate how peptides, polypeptides, and proteins are represented. Peptides can be represented with a Lewis structure because they're small enough to draw. Polypeptides, on the other hand, are longer and would occupy too much space on paper if we were to draw the Lewis structure for each amino acid in a polypeptide chain. Therefore, it's typical to draw circles with the three-letter abbreviation for the amino acid in the peptide chain. And proteins are drawn with images of tape or ribbon to represent a series of amino acids. Notice in this protein the helical structure of the chain of amino acids. This helical structure comes about because of intermolecular attractions and disulfide bonds. Here is an example of a small polypeptide chain. The C-terminal amino acid is usually drawn on the right side, and the N-terminal amino acid is on the left. And we see there are three amino acids, and there are two amide bonds in this polypeptide chain. Also notice that each amino acid has a three-letter abbreviation. You do not need to memorize any of the three-letter abbreviations for amino acids, but I do want you to be able to recognize the amide bond in a polypeptide. Here are some more examples of how proteins are represented. In this figure, the protein is modeled as tape or ribbon. Key intermolecular attractions are noted. 
including the disulfide bond. Here are some more examples. Here we see the pleated sheet 